want to thank everybody for being uh, part of this dedication today. Uh, you know, we have our Heritage Festival coming up this weekend. I think it's quite appropriate that we see the heritage of our, com of our country displayed here with the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. It says, as I was reading, it says, during the course of the seven year war that followed, nine of the signers died of wounds and hardships. 17 lost everything that they owned, and five were imprisoned or captured. They risked all they had, sacrificing everything for freedom. They all kept their sacred honor. We're honored to be here today and be a part of this dedication. I know we had a uh, county commission meeting in Concord. It was our state state convention and we ran across, it was Ron, I believe, that told us he asked us if we were interested in having a display like this. And of course we told him, yes, how much was it going to cost us? And he said, well, <laughs> it wasn't going to cost us anything. So we were glad to get to be a part of that and obviously we signed on to do that. Ben Franklin also had a quote, he said, when they got through signing the Declaration of Independence, he said that we have a republic if you can keep it. Mm -hmm. We've done a good job keeping this republic for over two, for 250 years, and it's in our hands to continue to do that now, even with the uh, voting that's coming up for this election, for us to make the right, right decisions. He also said for us to be an informed, a, a informed public. So we need to be informed as to how we're going to vote, who we're going to vote for, and what we're going to do, which way we want our country to go. Cal uh, has sent me something on the Charters of Freedom. Just a second here. As in 2012, Vance had an idea we could duplicate the experience of seeing the Constitution Declaration, Declaration of Independence. And two years later, he, would, he gifted the first charter of freedom setting outside of Washington, D.C. It now operates as a nonprofit education project that promotes civic education and preservation of American history. Over 30 settings have been dedicated across the country in nine states. We are fortunate to be one of those states and one of those counties in North Carolina. Again, I would like to thank everybody for being here today. And I'd like to end with this quote. And by the blessing of God, may that country itself become a vast and splendid monument, not of oppression and terror, but of wisdom, of peace, of liberty upon which the world may gaze with admiration forever. This is the United States of America. We're all proud to be Americans. We're proud to be part of this dedication today. I want to thank again everybody for being here. God bless America. All right. All right. Thank you, Chairman Emory. At this time, I'm going to ask Vice Chairman Charlie Dunn Jr. to come and have our invitation. Spring, dear most gracious and holy heavenly, heavenly Father, we thank you for this occasion. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us and all the things that you will be doing. We pray for your guidance, for your mercy, and your grace. Father, we thank you for this dedication and for Vance and Mary Jo Patterson for their vision and their gift to this county. And Father, we pray that as people come to observe these documents, that they will come to appreciate the price and the sacrifice that it took to make America free. And Father, we pray that it remains so we pray that you would bless our government, our military, Father, all those who are 
have authority and ask that you guide them. Bless this republic. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Now for the presentation of our nation's colors, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Sergeant Wesson and the Marine Corps, the Marine Cherry Point Air Station Squadron of Cherry Point Headquarters and Headquarters Squadron Color Guard. Now singing our national anthem today is going to be a sophomore from Jones Senior High School, Miss Kelsey Harden. Please 
join me as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you to each of you for coming out today. Uh, first, I want to recognize those active military and veterans that are in our uh, crowd today. If you will, please stand for just a moment. Let's give these, around, these folks a round of applause. Thank you. Next, I want to recognize Mary Jo and Vance Patterson. Founders of Foundation Forward um, and the Charters of Freedom. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Local elected officials in the crowd today, the Jones County Board of Commissioners, thank you so much for your commitment to Jones County, your vision for Jones County, and looking out to serve the public the best we know how. Thank you. Jones County Sheriff Matthew Wyman and staff, Chief Deputy Irvin, Captain Pridgen, thank you for your commitment to Jones County and protecting us. <laughs> Town Councilman from Trenton, I see Mayor Spivey, Council Member Green, uh, Town Clerk Spivey, if I miss anybody, I'm sorry, but thank you so much for the Town of Trenton. Um, I see Mr. Charlie Jones as well, um, not a Council Member, but thank you so much for your commitment, brought me upon chair. Um, and protecting our history here around the Trenton area. Town of Pollocksville, Mayor Bender, thank you for your commitment to Jones County and the Pollocksville area. Town of Maysville, Mayor Wayne Salen. Town Commissioner, Dan Ryan. Town Manager, Shamata Brown. Finance Officer, Mr. Demetrius, thank you so much for your, uh, your support continuously. Uh, Film Station Nonprofit, Ms. Mary Ann, thank you for coming and supporting us today. All community members and leaders, Representative Chris Humphrey, Thank you so much for continuing to serve um, in your capacity at the state level and for <laughs> continuing to just um, advocate on behalf of Jones County in that capacity. Thank you so much. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, uh, some of our school system staff, Superintendent Bryce Marquis and Assistant Superintendent Wayne Winnington, thank you so much for your continuous support. Thank you so much to the student that came out and Pope Foy's great leadership today um, by leading us in our our, um, our pledge of allegiance. And also, I just want to continue to thank each of my department heads, supervisors of the county um, that work for you as public servants, recreation director, David Mather, um, finance officer, Blake Bachelor, Jennifer King, deputy director of the Minish Hall, HR director. If I missed any of you, I'm sorry. Thank you for each of you. We would not be here without anyone in this crowd today. Thank you so much. Next, I'm going to ask for Mike Ura. And if I mess that up, Mike, I apologize. <laughs> Hello, Jones County. Hello. Thank you all for coming out today. What a great crowd we have. Appreciate you being here. So, thank you, Kyle, for recognizing the dignitaries in the crowd. And I would like to recognize some members of our team who are here and tell you a little bit about our organization. So, first of all, we have our Communications and Resources Assistant, Alexis Thurlow. We have our Construction Lead, Omar Bonner. Our Communications and uh, Resources Director, Mike Unruh. And in a moment, I'll introduce a couple other members here. Your setting that you see before you today has an area in front of the Constitution that you'll notice of engravable papers. That's called the Field of Honor. And we have quarter forms over here with Mary Jo. If you would like to purchase one of these, it's a beginning at a $100 donation, but you could get brick or granite papers for yourself, a loved one, to recognize your business, to recognize your civic group. 
as we are a nonprofit, these are all tax deductible donations that help us continue these, to build these settings across the state and around the country. So any contributions would be greatly appreciated and the order forms are over here on the table. There's also sign-in sheets over here with Mary Jo. I'd like to make sure that everyone here goes and signs your name on the sign-in sheets because there's a time capsule in the back of the Constitution that is going to be sealed up and we want to make sure that everyone who's here today is recognized for your attendance so when that time capsule is opened up uh, you'll be recognized and also it could be your descendants who are the mayor or county manager in the future that open that up and it, what a great thing it would be for them to see your name and to know their history and their legacy. So. Uh, my name again is Mike Unruh. If you have any questions for press releases, media, we, we are streaming live on Facebook. We will have a video posted on our YouTube channel in a couple of days. But uh, feel free to contact me after the event or Alexis. We have business cards that we can give you and we'd be happy to send you a press release directly or get you any pictures or videos that you might like. One other person that I would like to uh, recognize in the crowd is Mrs. Wilson from Congressman Greg Murphy's office. Appreciate you being here today. And without further ado, I would like to introduce our founders, Mary Jo Patterson and Vance Patterson. making the effort to be here today. My question is, are you ready to be a part of history? Because we're going to dedicate your charge of freedom. It's going to be here for the next 300 to 500 years, and your future generations are going to know you are here. My name is Vance Patterson. I'm a father of four, married 50 years. Next week, Mary Jo. <laughs> we are from Burke County. That's in the western part of the state. Uh, I'm a businessman. I started a company that makes industrial fans back in 1989. We actually make things out of metal, ship them across the country and around the world. I'm a very proud American manufacturer. I want to tell you a little about the inspiration behind the foundation that made your charters of freedom possible. I'm going to tell you a little about your setting here, and then I'm going to give you a challenge to take with you. About 13 years ago, Mary Jo and I were up in Washington, D.C. We decided to go to the National Archives because we'd never seen the original documents, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. We found ourselves wandering down these hallways looking at different displays, and then it opened up in this large room. We walked through these big bronze gates into this little tunnel, and there were the founding documents on the other side. They're in chronological order. Declaration of Independence on the left, four pages of the Constitution in the middle, and Bill of Rights on the right. And this is when we learned that these are known as your charters of freedom. Now, one of the things I liked, once you got into the rotunda, was that there were no lines. You just wander around looking at different exhibits, and when you got a chance, you stepped up and looked at the documents. I will never forget the first time I saw the Declaration of Independence, something our founding fathers had actually penned, and then looked down and saw their signatures. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Rutledge, Wilson, and the others. I just got goosebumps. And then we moved over and saw the first page of the, of the, of the Constitution, and those three words, we the people. I actually got a lump in my throat. Mary Jo was wiping tears out of her eyes. It was really an emotional experience for us. Well, the following year, back in Burke County, I got to thinking about that experience, and a thought came to me. What if I could duplicate that experience and bring it back to the citizens of Burke County? Well, I told Mary Jo about the idea, and she liked it. So we started working on a project, and it turned out to be an education project. And the scope was to design and build a replica of the Charters of Freedom, as, as exhibited in the World Tunnel. Put it in a central location in Burke County. It had to have high visibility, high foot traffic, and easy access for school children and veterans. Well, it took us over two years to get this done, even though it was a gift to the county. But after a late night joint session 
between the Burke County Commissioners and the City of Morganton Council that he finally agreed to accept the gift and give us a suitable location. Well, there was something Mary Jo and I hadn't told him about. You see, we'd only seen these documents once, and there are no, no dimensions, no drawings, nothing available to the public. So the next morning, Mary Jo and I got up, got back in the car, drove back up into Washington, walked into the rotunda, and now they won't let you take out a tape measure and start measuring the national treasure. So, but we had a plan. We walked in, Mary Jo went one way and I went another. And I stepped up in front of the Constitution and I did this. <laughs> and I was standing in the middle. Meanwhile, Mary Jo is actually walking up to the documents, turning around, facing the audience, and marking on her body the different elevations. And then we left before anybody asked us what we were doing. <laughs> so I tell people, while you're sitting here, may not be exactly what's up in Washington. Keep in mind, it's based on two paces of a short guy and three marks on my wife's body. <laughs> we North Carolinians do have our ways. <laughs> Well, on July 2nd, 2014, we dedicated the first Charters of Freedom setting outside of Washington, D.C., in downtown Morganson on the historic Burke County Courthouse Green. <laughs> the project was so well received, and we enjoyed it so much, we decided to do another one. The second one went in, Merch, in uh, Cherokee County, as far west of North Carolina as you can go, the little town of Murphy. That was dedicated September 17th. 2014 on Constitution Day. The third one went downtown Asheville in Bunton County. Now during this time, we decided to set up a 501c3 because we knew we were going to be doing more. Let me tell you a little about the principles of Foundation Four, real quickly. Number one is education. Education to preserve American history at the founding of our government. Education on the founding documents. And education in civics, so all will know how government was meant to serve and protect we the people. Federal, state, and local. Number two is access. You see, not everybody can get to Washington, D.C. to see the original documents. It took Mary Jo and I over 60 years to get there the first time. So we want to provide access to these documents in a proper setting in the communities. And number three is community. Having your Charters of Freedom setting here in Jones County allows you a place to have where you can gather to celebrate, to honor, and to reflect. To date, Foundation Forward and Mary Jo and I have gifted and dedicated 62 Charters of Freedom settings across the country. That's in North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Nebraska, South Dakota, Alabama, Virginia. I used to say as far west as Carson City, Nevada, but now it is the Reagan Library, Simi Valley, California, and as far north as Wasilla, Alaska. Yours is the 62nd Charters of Freedom setting and the 36th here in the state of North Carolina. And I'll tell you a little more about that later. Now let me tell you a little about your setting. One of the things I learned in life was that if you want a setting or a monument to last, you put more underground than above ground. This is not a tip over monument. Your foundation goes down three and a half feet. It is solid, reinforced poured concrete coming up into a solid core. Just the core and foundation of that large piece weighs over 38,000 pounds, over 19 tons. There are six documents displayed seven here. Each one is on quarter inch etched bronze and weighs over 50 pounds. There's a medallion on the front which is very special. The eagle represents the Declaration of Independence. Proud, bold, defiant. There are seven stars above the eagle which represent the seven articles of the United States Constitution. And there are ten stars under the eagle which represent the first ten amendments approved your Bill of Rights. Now, people ask us, why are we doing this? And we say, yes, it's very expensive. But we believe it is a service to our country 
by helping to preserve what our founding fathers gave this country, a government to serve and protect. We learned that we had four founding fathers of education, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and James Madison. They believed that in order to have a free and independent country, you must understand how government works, that you cannot control what you do not understand. Thomas Jefferson in 1789 wrote, whenever a people are informed, they can be trusted with their own government. And James Madison, a five foot four inch political rock star of his era, wrote in 1822, a people who mean to be their own governors must arm themselves with the power knowledge gives. You wouldn't believe how many people come up to us while we're building these and say, that's it? Just more pages to the Constitution? And we tell them that's it. All of our laws and our government are based on those four pages. You wouldn't believe how many people don't know the first approved 10 amendments are our Bill of Rights. I guarantee you there are people here today that are hearing that for the first time. You see, education. Now, you may have noticed I have not been calling this a monument. The definition of a monument is a memorial to honor a person or an event. This is not a memorial. This is an active, hands-on educational supplement for your school's curriculum. Imagine, if you will, teachers bringing the third, fourth, and fifth grade classes down here to your charters of freedom. All that you hear, they'll learn a little about our founding fathers, a little about the documents, a little about government, state, local, federal, and about local heroes. This is already happening across the country in communities that have their own charters of freedom. And the children love these annual field trips where they can get out and actually experience some of the history of their era. There are 3,142 counties, boroughs, parishes, independent cities, census zones, and the District of Columbia in the United States. Our long-term goal over the next 10 years is to provide charters of freedom in each one of those communities. Our short-term goal is to do all 100 counties of North Carolina. Yours being 36, we're well on our way. Now, you may have noticed, I said earlier there are six documents, and you've got seven here. While I would be making uh, presentations across the country and across the Carolinas, sometimes I would get the question, what about the other amendments? And I knew what they were talking about. The 13th, 14th, and 15th. The 13th abolishes slavery. The 14th guarantees citizenship. And the 15th guarantees the right to vote. And I'd say, well, yes, those are very important. But they're not part of the Charters of Freedom. So they're not part of the gift. And sometimes the discussion that would follow would get in the way of them accepting the gift. And I got to thinking over the years that this is more about not just so much Mary Jones in my experience, but it's more about education. And people, all people, need to know that those amendments are in place and guaranteed law. So I did some research, and I learned that there's never been a document made up of the Civil Rights Amendments. Not only that, there are two more that needed to be included. The 19th, which is women's suffrage, and the 24th, which was the result of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. You don't have to own property to vote, no poll tax. So I put together a document, uh, roughed it out, using Article 5 of the United States Constitution for amending the Constitution. And I contracted with a uh, nationally known calligraphy artist, John Stevens out of Winston-Salem. And I asked him to come up with a document similar to the, Civil Re to the uh, Bill of Rights. He researched the writing styles the materials and the format for documents in the 18th century. It took him over six months to come up with a document, which being an entrepreneur, I thought was a little bit long, but he came up with a true historic work of art, and that's on display here for you, and it'll be here right by the Bill of Rights from now ever. All right, I told you I was gonna leave you with a challenge. Our founding fathers were challenged by the greatest power on earth in their day, the British Empire. They protested, they fought a war and won a war 
all the while putting together a government that is still in effect over 230 years later and replicated by more than 60% of the governments around the world. They met their challenge. Kyle Smith, Frank Emery, and the Jones County Board of Commissioners were charged with bringing a charter of freedom setting here to Jones County. As of today, they met their challenge. Your challenge actually began about eight years ago. Mary Jo and I just finished dedicating our Charters of Freedom City at Hanover College in Southern Indiana. We were getting ready to leave and I looked across the campus center and I saw Ron Wells, African American Facilities Engineer, who had helped me a lot during the dedication. And I said, I gotta go thank this guy again. So I walked over and I'm shaking Ron's hand. I said, thanks again for all your help. And he said, thank you for making this contribution to our community. And I said what I usually said, you're welcome and just make sure they use it after we leave. And he looked at me and said, Mr. Patterson, I've already done that. I brought my son over last night. And we had the talk. And I said, Ron, that means more to me than anything anybody's ever said after a dedication. Way to go. So here's your challenge. Just like Ron Wells, you bring your child, your grandchild, your niece, your nephew down here to your Charters of Freedom. And you have the talk like Ron Wells did. You tell them about their freedoms and rights and how those freedoms and rights give them an advantage over the rest of the world to pursue their passion, to chase their dreams, to accomplish their goals and get out of life what they want to get out of life. You do that, Mary Jo and I, and all of Foundation Forward, as far as this gift is concerned, we'll call it even. Thank you. Smith, please come forward. Let me read this so I can see it. I don't have to read the rest of my speech. I don't give it to you too much. All right, certificate of title. The Charters of Freedom setting located at Jones County Civic Center, 832 North Carolina Highway 58, South Trim, North Carolina. Hereby gifted from Foundation Forward of Burke County, North Carolina, to the children, veterans, and citizens of Jones County, Trenton, North Carolina. All rights, responsibilities, and care for this setting, displaying the Declaration of Independence, United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and Civil Rights Amendments are hereby accepted by Jones County. September 23, 2024. Thank you so much for this initiative and, and thank you um, for the connection that was made with the Jones County Board of Commissioners at a state conference. Thank you, Vance and Miss Mary Jo, for those markings that were put on your body and those two long steps that you made. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, we've got just two more quick things to do. Um, we are going to do a cannon salute. So if uh, I guess my candidates are ready and everything. Yeah. I knew I wanted to do a cannon salute at the first dedication, but I didn't know how many times to fire the cannon. So I did some research. I knew 21 wasn't right. So I did some research and learned that the cannon salute kind of originated back in the 17th century. Ships pulling into port would want the port to know that it didn't be a threat to them. So they turned their cannons to sea and discharged three rounds. Well, the port, having more cannon and more powder, would answer seven in kind. Show them everything was okay, and that's where 21 gun salute came from. Well, again, I knew that wasn't right. And I remember I'd done business in Edinburgh, Scotland. They told me the story of how the Scottish liked the way the British marked the time of day. At noon, they would fire 12 rounds so all the ship's captains and shopkeepers could set their clocks. Well, the Scottish, being Scottish, and that is my heritage, reason. Why fire 12 rounds at noon when they can wait one hour and save 11 rounds? <laughs> so at 1 o'clock every day, there is a howitzer up in the old fort in Edinburgh that goes off so you can set your clock. So I knew my number was somewhere between 1 and 21. And I decided on 7 because there are 7 articles in the United States Constitution 
and because of history. So we're going to fire one round for every article of the United States Constitution. Now the cannons are loud, but they're a lot of fun too. <laughs> Yeah. When I get to Article 5, with the commissioners who are going to pull the uh, drapes off the exhibit, go around to the back of the exhibit, and then I'll be ready to go. So that's at Article 5. citizens of Jones County, I give you your charters of freedom. And that concludes our dedication. Thank you for coming out. Y'all did a great job. Do you want to say anything? All done. There's a cooler over here with ice water in it if you'd like to grab some ice water. Also, before you leave, please make sure to sign in over here on the sign-in sheet. We want to make sure that you're remembered in the time capsule. Any, or, any of the candy or goodies that are on the table there, please feel free to take a flag, pencil, anything like that. If you have uh, children or grandchildren at home, take some stuff home for them as well.